Good morning. I have been thinking about what else might be of interest in my shop, and I would like to describe to you the process by which I arrived at this forge. Getting metal hot is the perpetual challenge of blacksmithing, and I'd been thinking for some period of time about how to get large pieces of metal hot. Sure enough, eventually, a commission came along for some large truss plates, and I had to heat big pieces in a hurry on a repetitive basis. And so I was able to develop, finish developing, and build a forge design I'd been thinking of for some time. So the design I came up with had to be an appropriate blend of form and function. I ended up coming to rest with this shape for the trusses that um, provide the stiffness in the barrel. The trusses were CNC plasma cut out of quarter inch plate. The barrel itself is 3 16 plate, was rolled into a half round uh, configuration. I'm happy with it. Okay, knowing that eventually I would have a crane in the shop, I realized it was a priority to make the forge top loading and liftable. In this way, and with this base, which is sturdy enough and able to be rotated to facilitate working from different angles, I can stack fire brick around the perimeter really as high as I would like, lower the forge onto the fire brick and create a, a forge volume in there that frankly is unreasonably big if I wanted to, perhaps big enough to put an anvil inside of this thing. So this is the mixing assembly, transfers the propane from overhead through a gate valve by a regulator, pressure gauge into a quarter inch copper tube. The orifice in the end of this is a 60 thousandths diameter MIG gun tip. Works perfect, threads into the copper tubing. Slips into the fan, rotates, slips into the ribbon burner, good to go. Likes about seven pounds to start. There are three different types of refractory in the construction of this forge. The base is a lightweight, highly insulating fire brick. They're soft. I can tell that they're going to deteriorate over time, but like I say, they don't weigh much. They insulate like crazy. The doors are a regular hard fire brick. They're tough. They thermocycle a whole bunch of times before they begin to crumble so I can move them around for my doors. The most interesting part of the forge is the insulating castable refractory that I use to cast the barrel of this thing. It's a product that is made by Harbison Walker, or at least labeled by Harbison Walker. I bought it from an E.J. Bartels outlet in Eugene, Oregon. Great guys. Their brand name is Castalite 30 Li. It's a 3000 degree insulating castable refractory, fairly user friendly, but follow the mixing instructions exactly. I was recommended to this refractory by my friend Ron Wales. It's perfect. The first time it comes up to 2,500 degrees, it has a couple of changes in its characteristic that are perfect. And that is, it comes up to about 2,000 PSI cold crushing strength, which is a pretty hard mix design. And it expands about 2% linearly, which squeezes any cracks that have formed out of existence and makes just a really tight, um, tough, bulletproof interior to my forge. So I've poured a lot of concrete in my life. I've been in construction for 40 years. I've poured or been responsible for the pouring of thousands and thousands of yards. But this little project was daunting to me. Number one, I had a lot of money in this thing before I ever bought the um, refractory. And once I purchased that stuff, I had enough invested in it that the project had to work out. I had some real questions about making the mechanical connection between the, the refractory and the barrel. 
I was not comfortable with putting any remesh, expanded wire, or um, rebar in the mix design to provide the tensile strength because I did not know how insulating and how much heat would accumulate in the middle of the wall thickness. I settled on quarter inch long pieces of one inch by one inch by one eighth inch angle iron welded on a six inch grid over the entire interior. This put a horizontal leg about centered in the two to three inch wall thickness of the forge and it seems to be working perfectly. I do not think that iron is getting up to any sort of a scaling heat in the middle of that mix design. So these ribbon burners are just an exceptionally efficient way to burn propane. I bought these two from my good friend, Ron Wales. He makes them, sells them, and I'm not sure how he does it, but the price that he sells them at made it impossible for me to even contemplate making them myself. Besides providing them, he had a lot of good insight on placement and capacity and um, air supplies and just the whole process of this forge was really expedited by the things that Ron had to tell me. As I mentioned earlier, this forge likes to start at about 7 PSI. I don't know why it takes that much fuel, but it does to keep maintain the flame until the thing comes up to temperature. When I say come up to temperature, I mean the whole thing, just a glowing chamber of intense heat to the point that all of the fuel is in instantly combusted when it enters the chamber. Once it comes up to temperature, I can drop it down to one and a half to two PSI, maintaining a nice forging temperature of maybe 1350 or 1400. To get back up to a welding heat, I crank it up to six, seven, eight, nine pounds, and it just really smokes. on this forge is uh, easy, off, on, and it'll spontaneously ignite for about seven to ten minutes after I shut it off. The concern, of course, is that if I just shut everything off, it'll chimney, that is, the heat from the interior will wick back up through the pipe and melt the guts out of my fan. So, in order to keep this from happening, I shut it off. Shut it off, and I can knock the pipe out of the board. and kill the fans, and put it to bed. I couldn't be happier with this forge. It's reasonably economical for the amount of heat that it makes. It costs me about three bucks an hour to run it. It'll heat anything, easy to start, easy to shut off, very versatile.